It's part of an international collaboration led by the University of Sussex. We unveil the blueprint to construct a large-scale quantum computer. Quantum physics is a very strange theory, predicting things like an atom can be at two different places at the same time. We are harnessing these very strange effects in order to build a new type of computer. These quantum computers will change all of our lives, revolutionizing science, medicine and commerce. We show the nuts and bolts construction plan for such a device. We also present a new invention, how we built this computer using individual modules. These modules are then connected using electric fields and we transport individual charged atoms from one module to another. This will allow us to build a quantum computer of any size, allowing us to achieve phenomenal processing powers. Here at the University of Sussex, we are now building a prototype device. And then British scientists say they've created a blueprint for a new large-scale supercomputer which could solve problems that would make would take current machines billions of years to work out. The quantum computer, they're calling it, has the potential to solve the mysteries of the universe, maybe, and transform the forecasting of weather and the financial markets. In a minute, I'll be speaking to the physicist behind the breakthrough, Professor Winifred Hensinger from Sussex University. There he is, poised to explain it all. First, <laughs> this is how it might work, and uh, I just might understand understand some of it. Well, a classic computer processes information, uh, as you probably know, using zeros and ones. That, of course, is binary code. Instead, a quantum computer uses atoms to encode information. It allows it, therefore, to process much more information all at once. If, for example, there was a phone book with a million names and numbers you needed to find a specific number in it, well, the science behind it says that because atoms can exist in different places at the same time, a quantum computer can look at all the numbers all at once. Now, to find the number, the conventional computer could take a million steps to find that number because it can only look in one place at one time. 
Another way to look at it is if there were a billion calculations to solve, currently a billion classic computers would be needed to work on each problem at the same time in order to equal the processing power of a quantum computer. Phew! Well, joining me now is Professor Hensinger, as I say, from Sussex University. Now, did it sound like I understood any of that? Because I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Just why can this be so much more powerful? Explain that to us than, than current computers, which most people think are pretty powerful already. The, this all relies on a very, very strange theory called quantum physics. Now, now, quantum physics has some very strange predictions, one of which is that an atom can be at two different places at the same time. Now, now you've got me already. How, yeah. how, how is that it possible? It's mad. It's very, very strange. But it actually happens. So in the lab, we can actually make experiment, in, in experiments make a single atom appear at two different places at the same time. Now, quantum physics has, has mystified physicists. Einstein called it spooky. Um, uh, people have tried and tried again to dispute these results and to see that can't be right. How can an atom be at two different places at the same time? But then, eventually, they, they had done so many experiments, they just said, OK, why don't we actually just try to tame these very strange effects to build an entirely new type of technology, and that's a quantum computer. OK, right. Well, and I'm also told that this is uh, fiction becoming fact. Douglas Adams wrote about this yeah. kind of thing in Hitchhiker's Guide yeah. to the Galaxy 30, 40 years ago. So imagine you have a computer which is capable of doing calculations where even the fastest supercomputer in the world would take a billion years to calculate. Right. So this is what this technology can do. It's, it's unbelievably complicated technology. Don't, don't think of it as, as a computer in, 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 in your office. Think of it as a, as a huge laboratory with lasers, vacuum systems, electronics everywhere. It's, it's, it's well, does it exist yet, or is it all in your mind? I mean, have you got the theory right? Have you actually built the machine? OK, so this is what we've just done. So in my group, for the last 10 years, we've developed quantum computing, and so have many groups around the world uh, trying to develop quantum technology. And in fact, in the UK, is a fantastic quantum technology program which accelerates Britain, actually, to very much to, to leadership in the world on, on, on this. But now what we've done now, and this is the big news here, is we've now moved away from academic studies and we've now published the actual nuts and bolts construction plan, how to put such a machine together. And so this is what we've, we've published now, and we really show every single detail, every component you're going to have to add in order actually to build such a device. Like, I mean, the commercial possibilities are endless. It sounds like you could be the next Bill Gates or something like oh, yeah. that. I mean, you know, to, to get to the boring stuff, the nitty-gritty. Uh -huh. have, have you got all the patents in place? Have you got the, the kind of business opportunities there? Or are you just uh -huh. excited, as I can see, by yeah, the theory? Absolutely. It's very hard. So don't think of this as like an innovation which you're going to, like, quickly put together and in two years time you're gonna set in every shop. Now I'm gonna have to tell you a little bit about how this thing actually looks like. It's first of all it's unbelievably tremendously complicated. We're gonna have to hold individual atoms in a tremendously good vacuum. So it's not going in a mobile phone anytime no, soon? No, not anytime soon. You're gonna have a device with, which actually maybe fits a building, possibly a whole football pitch. And this is so complicated to, to construct, you know, we may take 10 years or even longer to build a large-scale device. Now we've got the blueprint to do this. Now we're going to start to actually... I've got all kind of, I, just, I was just uh -huh. going to jump in here because then you could become a Bond villain or something like <laughs> this. It sounds like you could control the world if this thing were built. I think this is one of the reasons why we've now published this very openly and, and, and give this uh, out to everybody to have a look at, also to help us with this and, 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 and to collaborate. So as I said, like here in Britain, we have a fantastic uh, quantum technology program and, and so this is one of the things we really want to do, actually really now, take academic study and push this in, into okay. real exploitation. Well, Professor Hensinger, very good to talk to you. Uh, come back and uh, tell us more as uh, the development takes place. It's